This video is going to be a film study look at DJ Reader. It's a little bit late. I know the signing was, I believe, Thursday afternoon. The Lions have been extremely active and very precise and targeted during the free agency period. Maybe, maybe not as splashy as other teams, maybe not as splashy as some Lions fans would have liked for them to be, but these signings, well, one trade in there as well for Carlton Davis III, they've been focusing on improving the known weaknesses for the most part, the defensive secondary. Um, and, and they've de definitely improved the talent level of the defense. The DJ Reader signing, to be real, is one that surprised me because the Lions were already really good at stopping the run. And DJ Reader is an amazing run defender. The other three guys that they signed, Carlton Davis III, Amik Robertson, and Marcus Davenport, uh, whose film I still haven't been able to get to, by the way, because I've been doing a deep dive on Derrick Henry and his usage with the Texans and and how the Ravens can implement him into their offense. I wanted it to be done for Saturday morning. It'll be a Saturday night or Sunday thing. But DJ Reader to the Lions is somehow an underrated signing for a defense that was already really good at stopping the run. And now, some of you guys aren't going to like what I'm going to say, he's their best run defender on the roster. And it's not even close. Aline McNeil is a very good player at defensive tackle. He's far better at rushing the quarterback than DJ Reader. Aiden Hutchinson, what do you say, 21 sacks, four interceptions, three forced fumbles, four fumbles recovered, in only 34 games played, probably 100 quarterback pressures, a slight exaggeration there. Just incredible productivity for a guy who even went, I think, six weeks without a sack in 2023. Amazing start to his career. Neither one of those guys in the front seven or front six is capable of reaching the heights of destruction that DJ Reader can against the run. Feel free to disagree with me if you do not like me saying he's the best run defender on the roster already. But once the film gets rolling, if you disagree, I find it hard to believe that you'll disagree. A healthy DJ Reader in 2024 uh, makes this defense scary from the standpoint of it takes away certain things that offenses may want to do. Still have to improve the talent at outside linebacker D end, opposite Hutchinson, that is and maybe draft a young corner. The, uh, Rob the Ro Robertson signing is really astute, if you ask me, because he's 25 years old. Davis is a little older and a little more experienced. I have a lot of familiarity with DJ Reader's game from watching him play against the Ravens. Since he signed with the Bengals in 2020, he's played against the Ravens five times. Now, if you don't know a little bit about DJ Reader, a little bit of backstory before we go to the film. He played his rookie year with Vince Wilfork in Houston. Yes, you heard that right. A, a guy who's been already been put in the Patriots Hall of Fame and nominated for the NFL Hall of Fame as well. DJ Reader was able to learn under and play with for a year. He's also a great athlete for a big guy. Very similar to McNeil, except this is one stark difference. Reader was athletic enough to play baseball in college. In fact, he played at Clemson. If you don't know, Clemson is a top 10, at that time, uh, baseball program in NCAA Division One, He was a first baseman, and, and he didn't do much statistically there. But he was on the team at a top-10 baseball program and played. To be real, I don't expect him to generate five-plus sacks in 2024. That would surprise me if he does. In fact, on some third and medium and third and long plays, he'll be off the field to give way to a better pass rush group, uh, whatever Detroit's front office can put together. The two-year, $27 million contract, I'm not sure where the Lions are in terms of salary cap from what I looked up this morning. About $30 million available, taking on the Davis and Reader, taking on the Davis contract and then signing Reader for such a big number. Um, certainly adjusts it, but with the draft coming up and, and roster cuts from other teams already happening and, and to happen once again, I think this team is in great shape to have a, a, dom a potentially dominant defense in 2024, which is scary with how efficient and explosive the offense already is. I'm going to try to give you guys an illustration of what you're getting when you bring DJ Reader into the building. This is a third and one against the 49ers week eight, 2023. I will reference film from 2021 and 2022 because I think it illustrates what DJ Reader is capable of on certain types of blocks. This is a fullback dive play. It goes down as a tackle for loss for Cam Taylor Britt, who's the corner that blitzes off the edge, basically behind the blocking scheme. Why? Why is he able to make the tackle? Well, because the fullback who's trying to pick up the first down literally runs into the back of his center on the midline, 
who's been driven back by DJ Reader. You will not get vertical push, vertical movement on DJ Reader in a single block situation. I'll give you the end zone angle of the same play. Looks a little less disruptive from the end zone angle, but hopefully that look from the all 22 tells you what he can do when an offensive line or an offensive coordinator asks his guys to block him one-on-one -on -one and try to get vertical push. It just does not happen. And generally, he's a better athlete than the offensive lineman assigned to block him as well. So when you're trying to get horizontal plays going, typical run concepts against Reader, they don't work either. This is going to change the types of plays that the Lions defense sees consistently because there's areas of the field, basically wherever DJ Reader's lined up, that are going to be unavailable to the offense completely. Week 13, 2023 into the boundary stretch pin pull concept basically for the Jags center and right guard are pulling and that's D it is an 11 yard gain that's the backside defensive tackle there DJ Reader who's able to get involved in the play my reason for choosing these two plays to show you first the strength and push that he gets on the first play on a third and one along with a guy who's athletic enough to get 11 yards downfield you did not, other than Ali McNeil, you did not have this type of D tackle in Detroit the last two seasons, at least since I've been paying attention. Let's put it that way. Finally, a toss play. Week eight again against the 49ers. Reader is the three technique. Here, this is a second and eight. Watch how he wins the block against the left guard. Left guard's trying to execute a reach. And again, DJ Reader doesn't get credit for this tackle just like similar to the Cam Taylor Britt TFL on the first possession. But what he does do is absolutely destroy any chance that Christian McCaffrey has to cut this football back up inside. So therefore, McCaffrey only has one choice, and that's a bad one. It allows the inside linebackers to flow over the top. Wilson, Pratt, uh, those guys played extremely well with, with Reader in front of them. The Times when the Ravens had the most success running against the Bengals defense in the last three years was the games DJ Reader didn't play. <laughs> so that's just a flat out way to assess it. When he's on the field, he will change the dynamic of your defense and he will change the types of schemes that are available for the offensive coordinator to call. But on a more focused in level, like the play you just saw there, he will change the options for running backs, limit them to where really, in most cases, there's only bad choices available. I'm going to use some film from 2021 and 2022 to kind of show you what I'm talking about. If you don't remember 2021, the Bengals go to Tennessee in the division round. The Titans are the number one seed. And the Bengals are able to get out of there with the win, obviously win the next week in Kansas City as well to make their first Super Bowl in a long time. This is DJ Reader dominating the Titans' offensive line. In that game, I believe he had six tackles. I think Brian Baldinger did a video about Reader after this game. I know I did as well. Think about it from my perspective. I'm a Ravens fan, lifelong Ravens fan from the standpoint of since they came back to Baltimore. And I chose to do a video about DJ Reader on another YouTube channel that I had after this game. That's how impressive he was. A couple more plays from this game so you get an illustration of it. Again, at three technique against the left guard. Everybody gets this. It's not just like only certain offensive linemen do. You can put him wherever you want. Zero technique over top of the center. They're trying to scoop him, which is conceptually similar to a reach block, except it's to the opposite side, meaning the run concept is going away from DJ Reader. Here's the midline. So it's away from him. It's either all run plays are either to or away from you or potentially at you. In this case, it's away. So what's happening is the left guard or left tackle, Taylor Lewan, is trying to scoop him. You cannot do this either. On horizontal run plays away from him, you will not scoop him, meaning he lined up closer to the point of attack, even though it's away from him, than the offensive line player trying to cut him off, essentially. Conceptually, it's the same thing as a reach block. You're not going to do that. He responds and reacts to blocks perfectly, the way you're supposed to. You get more illustrations of that as the video goes along, but I'm trying to illustrate to you his athleticism, his contact balance, his ability to move horizontally while being engaged by uh, an offensive lineman. Inside shade here. 
of the right guard, and again, a run play away from him, you will not cut him off. And if you are able to beat the head, meaning if you're able to get your head to the play side from him, then he has the strength to just be able to basically walk you back into the running back and then finish off the tackle. He played a brilliant game that day in the division round against the Titans, and he was one of the main reasons why the Bengals were able to go in there and get a win. Finally, will not get as much impact from him against the pass. In, in a lot of third-down situations, he will be off the field. Why? Well, he has the ability to do it. It's because he reads blocks. It's because he plays the right way. He d- he's not just flying upfield on certain situations, and that's why you guys paid so much money for him, because he does things the right way. He doesn't know whether it's a run or pass initially. He has to respond to the block. In this case, he does. Once he recognizes pass, able to rip off, still get a quarterback hit. You're not going to get a ton of sacks out of DJ Reader, but other guys are because it, you're going to stop or slow down the run such that there's going to be m- more third and sixes and more third and eights. This one brings me uh, no joy to show at all. This is 2022 when the Ravens, without Lamar Jackson, go to Cincinnati in the wild card game and, and damn near pull off the upset. Uh, we, were we not to fumble on the one-yard line, probably actually do pull off the upset. But in any case, Tyler Linderbaum and Kevin Zeitler are trying to reach DJ Reader. They're trying to get to his outside because this stretch outside zone concept is trying to get to the outside. And again, what did I say earlier? If you can beat the head, and you notice you've got two guys here, Linderbaum's head is on the correct side to the play side. He's beat the head. And Kevin Zeitler is working on the backside. Reader has the contact balance to stay through all that and basically push Tyler Linderbaum into the running back, condense the run lane such that the running back, in this case, J.K. Dobbins, doesn't have a two-way go. This is a brilliant football player against the run. And it's okay if you didn't know that before watching the video and maybe earlier you said, Coach, I think you're wrong when you say that he's the best run defender we'll have. After watching all of this film, I'm not sure how you could dispute that. Again, run concept away, flowing from the backside. He defeats blocks. I will never forget when I first started to try to do football evaluation on YouTube. I was listening to an interview by Brandon Williams, defensive tackle, used to play for the Ravens. I think he actually won the Super Bowl this past year with the uh, Chiefs. And he said, or two years ago with the Chiefs, he said, in the NFL at the defensive tackle position, we have to defeat blocks. We have to react to the block and then defeat the block, even though the offensive lineman knew where his steps were going pre-snap, and we did not. And DJ Reader does that consistently. I'm going to try to be real intentional here when I talk about him responding to blocks and responding to them correctly. It's a combo by the left guard and left tackle. I think this film was from 2022 against the Patriots. Going to a knee on the combo block, old school technique. I'm talking 30, 40 years ago. If you feel like you're getting moved, go to a knee. So you'll, you'll basically will not get moved anymore. But DJ Reader brings the new school flavor to it because he's able to pop back up and get involved in the play. He's able to respond to blocks because of the training at practice, how smart he is, and, and probably additional to that, is some formation and situation understanding. I could have shown you four or five more instances of DJ Reader doing that right there, going to a knee briefly, and then having the awareness to be able to pop back up. No, by the way, they did force and recover a fumble there as well. Bengals are kicking the the three technique really late here, so he doesn't really get into a stance. He's constantly disruptive. And and my bet is if you were able to talk to offensive linemen across the NFL, guys that they really do not like to play against, I'm talking about guards and centers, DJ Reader would be at the top of that list. Really, I think, great way to illustrate his block reaction and then block destruction. It's going to be a down scheme here by the 49ers. The guard to the le- our left-hand side is pulling, and I probably should have found a way to slow this down because what occurs here is he's initially trying to engage the center, who he notices 
is stepping away because it's a down scheme, immediately recognizes, quickly recognizes that it's going to be the guard stepping down on him, stands the guard up, not involved in the tackle, but it's a wrong arm technique by the Bengals. So everything is designed to spill here. So watch 57, wrong arm, this puller, which I think is the right guard, and then that allows Wilson to flow over the top. There's new school names for it that um, weren't around 20 years ago when I started coaching or when I started to learn about football uh, heavily. But DJ Reader is a part of giving your defense options on how to defend things. You don't have, always have to set things inside. You can wrong arm them because he will take away any type. And this is a this is a wall scheme. So basically you're trying to build a wall and then have the running back run off of that wall. So they defeated it with the wrong arm technique of 57, and then Wilson flowing over the top. My point in showing you Reader is he is step one in that foundational way of trying to stop the run. You don't have to do it with a wrong arm technique, but you can. And you can do that at a really high level consistently when you have a guy like DJ Reader who on the first engagement is able to respond to the block correctly. This is another down scheme. So except instead of having a zero technique nose at this point, he's shaded, so he's in the A-gap, 2-I, if you will. So he's going to get, again, a back block by the center, except now it's on him. On the previous play, he was lined up at a zero, and the center blocked away from the play, a back block. And so he had to deal with the down block by the guard. Now the back block essentially is a down block. Well, first of all, he's able to defeat the head here because how, how quickly he reacts to the block. And the wall that's supposed to be formed here, you can see this nice wall that's formed with a puller to lead up. Now, Mike Hilton's a badass football player. He's also involved in this. But as you get to all 22, you'll see DJ Reader has broken the wall. He's broken through the wall and become an element to stopping this play that shouldn't be there from a conceptual standpoint. We'll pause it here, let this run a couple of times. There's the wall that should be built here. By these guys, Hilton's going to fold in and make a tackle. He's a great football player as a nickel defender. That is DJ Reader's helmet right there. And you can see the right arm of one of the offensive linemen trying to grab because he understands it's a wall concept. You don't want to let any penetration get through the wall so the running back can run tight to the wall. Now that you've seen that one time, let's pull this back to the end zone angle. And hopefully the way that I've explained it is, is done enough of a job here to show you Inside of the wall, DJ Reader can move the wall and penetrate it such that he can play a role in stopping the player, getting contact on the running back that should not happen. This is a, an elite run defender, in my opinion, and you couldn't have done a better job from a Detroit Lions front office standpoint of getting someone who is amazing against the run. In some ways, I actually wonder, did they really need – need a defensive tackle who could get to the quarterback more. But this will make teams one-dimensional, make other teams' offenses one-dimensional sooner within the game. You will find by the third or fourth possession, more often in 2024, teams will go away from running to certain areas of the field because you have a DJ reader on the field. I can describe that dynamic because I've seen it multiple times. I'll show some plays from 2023 and one from 2021. Jet sweep is something that was run a whole lot more often against the Bengals than other teams. I suspect, and I'm offering it to you now, that part of that dynamic was teams recognizing they couldn't run the ball successfully in certain areas of the field because of how dominant DJ Reader was. And the, and the Bengals were able to be really good at stopping the run, it, particularly against 11 personnel, which we all know is is what a lot of teams base out of now. This is filmed from 2022 AFC Championship uh, championship game, and it's another jet sweep. I can f And by the way, DJ Reader actually gets involved in this tackle on Miko Hardman. You may not have been as excited about this signing as I was, but as soon as I saw teams or people saying on social media that DJ Reader was visiting with the Lions, I was excited because this is a really dominant football player against the run, someone who is going to limit the options for the offense and therefore, I think, make other guys' jobs easier. 
As I mentioned earlier, I would not expect him to be a guy to generate five-plus sacks in 2024. If he's doing his job on first down and second down, he won't be on the field as much on third down. It's a, a weird paradoxical statement, I know. But if he's able to slow down or shut down the run game by other teams as often as I expect him to, with the combination of talent that will surround him, he won't have as many opportunities because he'll be off the field on third and six. I fully expect the Lions to have a better pass rush in 2024, either by addressing it in the draft or free agency or some type of cut where they're able to pick up a player that doesn't impact the comp uh, comp formula. In my opinion, DJ Reader is the type of guy that forces other teams to limit their offensive play calls sooner in the game and makes it more difficult for them to execute a number of run concepts that might even be foundational for their offense. You may not be as excited about the signing as I am. I'm excited for you. If you're a Lions fan, you're probably the only type of individual listening this long or, or watching this long. I think DJ Reader makes this team better from day one. I understand he did have a torn tendon uh, late in the season, 2023. In my opinion, this was a very astute signing by the front office extremely athletic guy to put next to an Aline McNeil. You have a player who's better at stopping the run from a defensive stack, tackle standpoint than Aline McNeil was. On first down in 11 personnel, teams are going to have a heck of a time trying to get to second and four against this Detroit defense. I know the, the weakness of the defense was pass rush, and the DJ Reader signing, in my opinion, doesn't look to, to address that. I think it may address that from the standpoint of putting teams in more known passing situations earlier in the game. The 2024 defense will not resemble the 2023 one at all, in my opinion, with the draft still there for Detroit to address defense, and I think they will. You guys should be really excited about this signing. Let me know if you, if you appreciate the video, if you enjoyed the plays that I selected to try to illustrate to you how impactful DJ Reader can be. I did want to go back and show you that film from 2021 and 2022 because um, I was impressed, number one, and it certainly wasn't fun to watch him dominate and, and make plays against the Ravens offense for two or three years. I'm kind of glad he's out of the division, to be real, even though they they did the uh, Bengals did sign, I think, um, I think it was Rankins, but he does not compare to DJ Reader from a run-stopping standpoint. If you think other Lions fans would appreciate and enjoy this video, Please consider grabbing a link to this video and sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.